Shalom, giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachah Korash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to speak on the gospel, all right, which is good news, all right, for the elect of the nation of Israel, which will trickle down to all Israel, all right, at some point in the future, all right, as the kingdom of heaven, the throne of David will be established in the earth, all right, again, and um, when you deal with the throne of David, all right, that is a narrative of the Holy Scriptures that Christians do not touch as pertaining to the kingdom that's coming. All right, they love to uh, make these bold accusations that, all right, uh, the promises, you know, the covenants and everything are open to all nations. All right, but when you deal with the throne of David, all right, that can be far from the truth. All right, and um, all of the prophecies verified, as it says in the book of Daniel, the second chapter, the kingdom is not going to be left to other people, but it is for the saints. All right, who under Yahweh Shai will return to the promised land, all right, that remnant, all right, and set up shop, as it says in the book of Luke, the first chapter, all right, Yahweh Shai will sit on the throne of David. Now, I wanted to um, deal with another point made in this video. Um, let's just go ahead and listen. And this is uh, uploaded by Elder Apostle Tahar, GMS declaring the end. Subscribe, be edified. The title of this video, you are going to get a spiritual foot up your ass sideways very soon. And that's coming for you heathen nations, all right? Because, uh, you know, the Heavenly Father judged the Israelites, all right, in times past by doing what? Raising up their enemies over them, all right? That's a part of the curses, all right? But there's another side to that story as the heathen have always paid for what they did to the Israelites, how much more here in this spiritual Egypt, just like Pharaoh paid, okay? The Heavenly Father raised up Pharaoh and the Egyptians to put hardcore bondage on the Israelites, all right? And uh, Moses and Aaron were sent, all right, with a message of good news for the Israelites. Well, that's happening in this time as well through us, as we've been raised up and endowed with the Holy Spirit to go out and preach the gospel to our people, all right, who are scattered amongst the four corners of the earth. But let's listen to this uh, statement and uh, we'll get edification. And we're only dealing with this for edification. You have a lot of you Israelites who ask, why do y'all give vocab Malone the time of day? Why don't you just ignore him? Well, you got to understand, you have a lot of our people leaving Christianity. All right. And the Heavenly Father puts the spirit on us to do what videos that we do. OK, so if we see a point we can edify on, why not edify? All right. If you don't want to watch the video, you can clearly ignore it and click on something else where he's not in the video because there's plenty of them. All right. But we deal with this guy because there's a lot of talking points that uh, we can use to edify because Christians misuse the Holy Scriptures and try to pit the Scriptures against the Scriptures for their narrative, all right? And they try to paint us as these barbarians, as crazy for saying that, you know, the uh, heathen nations will be under our foot in the kingdom. Well, that was the very <laughs> essence of the throne of David. As a matter of fact, real quick before we play this, all right, this is uh, 2 Samuel 22, all right, David's psalm of deliverance, because before David was crowned king, first in Hebron, he underwent all manner of hell, man. And ironically, before he was crowned king in Hebron, he had just got through slaughtering the Amalekites, and he slaughtered many nations, okay? And once the throne of David was established, Solomon forwarded that very throne for 40 years, and the heathen, all right, were subdued. Now, Solomon dealt 
fairly with the heathen. Okay. And Solomon also went off by allowing the heathen to continue their gods. All right. But the, the, the bottom line is the throne of David was for the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay. And the heathen were under us. Now, when you get, you can, you should read this Psalm or this song. All right. Uh, for yourself, but I'll just jump to the point. Okay. Second Samuel's 22 and 38. Now this is David, right? And we'll get the prophecies where the tabernacle of David will be built as in the days of old. I have pursued my enemies, 2 Samuel 22 and 38, and destroyed them and turned not again until I have consumed them. And I have consumed them and wounded them, and they cannot arise. Yea, they are fallen under my feet. What does that mean? Your enemies are your footstool. Okay? For thou hast girded me with strength to battle them that rose up against me. All right, thou subdued under me, thou hast given me the necks of mine enemies that I might destroy all them that hate me. Okay, and you can keep reading down here. All right, verse 45, strangers shall submit themselves unto me. As soon as they hear, they shall be obedient unto me. Now, this is David speaking of his throne. And when you read prophecy in Amos 9, Okay. The restoration of Israel. All right. It says in that day, will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and will close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and will build it as in the days of old. So if the Lord is going to build the tabernacle of David as in the days of old. All right. What does that mean for the heathen nations? All right. We just read what that meant. And that's what we're going to discuss. We'll come right back to this point. But uh, let's listen to this uh, this character here. Vocab Malone. The only way to be identified as a descendant of Abraham is spiritually by having the same faith. Mm. And here's the thing with most Hebrew Israelites. Most of them deny the, the gospel. The actual good news, I don't know about apostle, I'm not actually saying that. He said that the Hebrew Israelites deny the gospel, the good news. We're going to read the good news uh, in Isaiah, the 60th chapter, or the 61st chapter. I, I'm still learning about the theology. Most of them deny the gospel. If you ask uh, a lot of these guys what the gospel is, then they'll say it's, we're going to be kicking the other nation ass in the kingdom. That's, that's what, that would be good. And that's good news, and that's a part of the gospel. The gospel is more than that. The gospel at the end of the day is Yahweh Shai redeeming us back to the Heavenly Father and us returning to the promised land, all right, so that we can have a sovereign kingdom, which is fulfilled in the throne of David. That's why the book of uh, Luke, let's get that real quick. Luke 1. All right. And 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth the son and call his name Yahweh Shai. This is before Yahweh Shai was even conceived in the womb. The angel went to Mary. OK, he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. OK. <laughs> and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There shall be no end. So the kingdom of heaven is the throne of David. All right. In which we will rule over our enemies. As a matter of fact. Let's jump to. Uh, Zechariah's prophecy. All right. Luke 1 and 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel for he have visited and redeemed his people. All right. Yahweh Shai was sent forth to redeem us back. All right, to the Father, and the land is going to be redeemed through him. He's the kinsman redeemer. That inheritance is going to be brought back to a right, its rightful owners, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, and have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from all the hand of all that hate us. 
Okay? Just this David, what did he say in 2 Samuel 22? Thou hast gave me to be rulers over mine enemies and the ones who hate me, to perform the mercy promised unto our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware unto our father Abraham, and we know that was passed down unto Isaac and Jacob, that we, that he would grant us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear. And how do we do that? We have to be sovereign. All right. And we're going to have new bodies. All right. But the throne of David. All right. Is to rule over the enemies. That's why it says in the book. Of Psalms 110. This is what David said. Psalms 110 and one. The Lord said unto my Lord. Which is Yahweh Shai. Sit thou at my right hand. See, Yahweh said unto my Lord, who's David's Lord? Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Who's on the right hand of the heavenly father? Okay. That priest after the order of Melchizedek. So the enemies are going to be made the footstool, whether you people want to believe it or not. That is a part of the gospel. All right. As we were just reading. He's going to build the tabernacles of David as in the days of old for what? That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, their lands, which are called by my name, said the Lord that doeth this. All right. And it is it is through the name of Yahweh. All right. By Hashem Yahweh Shai that all of these things are going to be done. That's all that means. All right. It says. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. The plowman shall overtake the reaper. See, we've been the plowman, but we're going to overtake those who have reaped the fruits of our labor and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed. See, we've been the treader of grapes. We've been the plowman, but we're going to overtake the reaper, which are you Edomites and you heathen nations who've benefited off of our downfall. And the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof, and also make gardens and eat the fruit thereof. See that? <laughs> He's going to bring us back to our land. And the, 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 the nation of Israel... All right, are going to part the inheritance amongst the 12 tribes, the 144 under Yahweh Shai, and then, you know, with the 12 at the head of that, then a large multitude. And then we're going to go throughout the four corners of the earth. And I will plant them upon their land, that will be the base, and they shall no more be pulled out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. So the remnant returning to the promised land, okay, is synonymous with what? The plowman overtaking the reaper. All right. Those that plow are those who work. Okay. Those who reap are the ones who reap the benefits of their work. And you can go directly to the curses and see that that will be a curse that will be on the Israelites in their captivities. All right. Not just one captivity in all their captivities. And where could you find their captivities? In the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter. All right. The Assyrian Babylonian captivity. The, 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 the uh, Persians and the Medes. The Greeks. The Romans. All right. And then you have that beast system. That little horn that would issue forth from the fourth beast, Rome. All right. Which is fulfilled in Babylon the Great. The NATO and the EU, but even before Babylon was established, that beast, okay, that 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 revival of Rome started at the Renaissance. All right, the French, the Spanish, the British, they they all had us in captivity. All right, and when you read Revelation the thirteen chapter, it says, "He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity." So you can't take the captivity written in the scriptures for the heathen, which are synonymous. All right. Which is synonymous with, you know, uh, uh, salvation. 
All right. As a matter of fact, Psalms 149 and 4, for the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Salvation is synonymous with what? Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of the most high be in their mouth and a two edged sword in their hand. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and the punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints, praise you the Lord. So yes, there will be people bound in chains in the kingdom of heaven, which is the throne of David on earth, as it is in heaven, in its perfected state, with Hamashiach Yahawashai establishing it. King of kings and Lord of lords. And according to prophecy, even in the New Testament, he's going to smite the heathen. So the good news, all right, or a part of the good news is the very fact that our, our enemies will be footstools. All right? It was good news for you all to have us down, right? So I'm going to read Isaiah the 61st chapter, which I remember the uh, Sakari brothers were speaking with vocab malone right and this topic of the gospel came up then and they went to isaiah the 61st chapter and vocab malone did not want anything to do with it all right as pertaining to verse five and we'll show you why this is the good news by the way yahweh shai himself in luke the fourth chapter okay quoted from this chapter all right. So you can read that in Luke 4 and 18. He went back to Jerusalem where he was uh, to uh, no, he went back to uh, Nazareth. Right. You know where he was raised. He wasn't born. There. He was raised there and he went into a temple and he, he read out of, you know, the prophet Isaiah. He read this very excerpt from Isaiah 61. We're getting ready to read and they were ready to throw him off of a mountain. So these words offend people. All right. So as you can see here, he the, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And have sent me to heal the brokenhearted that that's quoting Isaiah 61. So let's read Isaiah 61. The gospel, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. All right. And Yahweh Shai is the head of this. All right. But it trickles on down to the prophets who are extensions of the word we have the words he's the word okay but through the holy spirit we have the words to go and preach unto our people so the spirit of the lord god is upon me because he have anointed me yahweh have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek he have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and that's you israelites and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And the main prison is in our people's minds because they follow plantation Christianity. You know, which which pretty much your, your master gave you that. And that's what vocab wants to reinforce. And on a pro-black channel, he's allowed to have a voice. Anyway, the, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh and the day of vengeance of our God. Now, the whole book of Isaiah, he's talking about the restoration of the Israelites. He focuses on that. Okay, and to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Who's Zion? Israel. Okay. What was, what was up on Mount Zion? The temple, which was symbolic, which was ultimately the, 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 when, when, when Solomon was there, he built that temple. Okay, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil, all right, for joy of mourning. That's this gospel, the, the understanding of who we are, and that's prophesied we will wake up. The garment of praises for the spirit of heaviness, they that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahweh, all right, that he might be glorified, all right, through his people on earth who will represent him under Yahweh Shai. And they shall build the old waste and raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities and the desolation of many generations. Which what is that in telling? That's the tabernacle of David we just read about. Okay. 
That is the tabernacle of David we just read about in Amos. That the Lord will raise up the tabernacle of David as in the days of old. All right. And, re and close up the breaches thereof and build it as in the days of old. That was what? All 12 tribes together sovereign. Okay. And Solomon forwarded that kingdom. Well, Yahweh is going to forward this kingdom. He's going to forward the tabernacles of David forever on earth, as we read in Luke, the first chapter. Okay. So verse four is right on point with what we read in Amos, the tabernacle of David. In verse five, watch this. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen. Okay. And your vine dressers. The son of the alien shall be your plowman, all right, and your vine dressers. Did not we just read in Amos, all right, that the plowmen are going to overtake the reaper? So here, the sons of the alien, the sons of these strange heathen nations are going to be our plowmen and vine dressers. Let's look up the word plowmen and vine dressers. Plowmen. OK, a car working, uh, working the land, plowman, husbandman, farmer. Working the land, yet not owning any of it. See, we've done that in this kingdom. All right. But in the kingdom to come, they will do that. They will work the land and not own anything because it will be our inheritance under Yahweh Shai, starting at the promised land. Okay, you're going to be our plowmen and our vine dressers. That is a part of the good news. We just read it, right? This is a part of the good news for the Israelites, man. Okay? Point blank period. Let's look up the term vine dressers. Okay? And we can, with other scriptures that reiterate this, Karam. To tend vines or vineyard, to dress vine. Basically, you're going to be a worker. Okay? Your sons, the sons of the Rothschilds, the elite of this world, are going to be our plowmen and, and, and vine dressers. But ye shall be named priest of Yahweh. And what does a priest do? Man, he he, he, he uh, teaches the law. So if we know all Israel is going to be perfect and in the new covenant, who are we going to be teaching? We're going to be teaching you heathen. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the wrenches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. For your shame you shall have double. And for your confusion you shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. And we can keep going. We can keep going, right? <laughs> this is a part of the good news. Okay. Yahweh Shah is going to inherit the heathen. Okay. Psalms, the second chapter. You heathen who are boasting and all of these hard things, like you're going to, you know, uh, uh, implement your technology and become the gods of the earth. Psalms 2 and 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? <laughs> Ain't they raging right now with their NWO? The kings of the earth set themselves together and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. See, vocab is a part of that. He does not want us to be connected to our power. He wants us to be black. He wants us to just sit back, you know, and, and, and tattoo our bodies on women, be whores. They're cool with that. But the narrative of us being the chosen people, he's not cool with that. Because he knows what that means for him. And this is why the Lord is sitting in the heavens laughing. And this is why you're all in derision. Let's look up this word derision. Vocab is in derision. Writing books, making websites, chasing us around the world. All right. Laig. To mock. To ridicule. All right. You're in derision. All right. You're in derision. You're through. Okay, you're in derision. You're 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 worried. 
your witchcraft and your lies and the narrative you once controlled, you don't control it no more. It's over. This is why your people just passed that law that you can't talk about them. Imagine being a chosen people having to pass a law that you can't be talked about. What did David say in 2 Samuel when, when the heathen, <laughs> let's get that. When, when the heathen saw him, they were obedient. Okay. So we know y'all not a fulfillment of the, the, the true people coming back. This is uh, 2 Samuel 22. And 45, strangers shall submit themselves unto me. That was under the, the first tabernacle of David. All right. And under the, the one that's coming to the earth under Yahweh Shai, the strangers are going to submit themselves unto me. As soon as they hear, they shall be obedient unto me. We're not going to have to pass laws. You, can, you can't talk about us because we're doing so much wickedness and getting caught in our own kingdom. No. So. Psalms 2, all right, and I'm going to just get to the point. Verse 6, verse, verse 5, then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. This is what's coming to the heathen. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree, the Lord Yahweh have said unto me, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, in the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. So we're going to have the whole world and the people of the world. Yahweh Shah is going to inherit the heathen. Thou shalt break them in pieces with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Right? And then... To link it all together, as we're going to be joint heirs with him, right? Revelation 2 and 26. And to he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with the rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I have received of my father. So Yahweh is going to give us power to do the same thing. We're going to have power over the nations. In the kingdom. But this is only to them who have an ear to hear. He doesn't have an ear to hear. He's fighting for his people's cause. We get it. Good news. That's good news. When we actually do it, when we enslave them, that will be a fulfillment of the good news. The fulfillment that gospel means good news lucy translated good, good news that's right in isaiah when the, when the, um, the torah is open and our lord the messiah opened up the torah he read from uh, what was that I, I believe it was isaiah 61 if i'm not mistaken now when he said this prophecy has been fulfilled what was fulfilled the fact that he was on the scene. So they picked the people around him uh, when he read the Torah, the, those Israelites, his neighbors, they, they said, well, is this guy saying that he's the Messiah? You see, this is what we read in, you know, when I took you to Luke 4. That's what the apostle, you know, Tahar is uh, speaking on, which he quoted Isaiah 61, which we just read that. That's the part of the good news is that we're going to have captives see we were captive but we're gonna have captives see they don't want us to boast in that but it's in the bible let, let you listen to a little bit more and i'll close from <laughs> in genesis God says to Abraham, through you and your offspring, I'll bless all nations. Since when is blessing nations kicking their ass and for all eternity? So, first of all, we don't teach that we're going to kick your ass for all eternity. The Edomites after a thousand years are going to be done away with. And the heathen after that, all right, when they go off, according to Zechariah 14, we'll judge them. 
All right. When they bless us, they will be blessed. OK, the book of Tobit. Tobit 13 and 11. All right. Many nations shall come from far. All right. To the name of the Lord God with gifts in their hands, even gifts to the king of heaven. All generations shall praise thee with great joy. Cursed are they which hate thee and blessed shall be all which love thee forever. So when we get our power, they're going to have to pay tribute. And they're going to be forced to keep the laws. When they go off, they will be judged. When they bless us and keep our ways, they will be blessed. So we don't teach a doctrine that they're going to kick their ass for all eternity. But you are going to get an ass kicking. Point blank period. There is going to be a period of a rod of iron because you have to be taught. That's the good news. These guys don't understand the basic essence of the honor. That blessing's going to us. And we are going to put our, our foot in their asses. That's right. Our, not our feet, our foot. F O O T S. Our foot in their asses. That's the promises they trust in. Them. Not the promises that God actually made. So he's saying God never promised Israel that they would have slaves in the kingdom. I mean, we can all easily go to Isaiah 14, but he's like the deaf adder, man. You know, he ain't going to get it, but this was just for the edification of the elect, man. So I'm going to leave it there. Shalom.